Good morning. Welcome to Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace. Welcome to the soul of Sunday. We are Unitarian Universalists. Ours is a historic faith with a progressive theology. We affirm the worth and dignity of every being and that we are all deeply interconnected. We are bound to one another, not by creed, but by covenant. And we are called to answer the call of love with open minds, open hearts, and open hands. Whoever you are, those of all nations, all creeds, all colors, all kinds of love, you are welcome here. May your life be as a song, resounding with the dawn, to sing away the light, and softly serenade the stars, ever dancing circles in the night. May your life be as a song, resounding May with the dawn, to sing away the song, light, and softly serenade Dear ones, as always, it is so good to be together while apart. Please join me in thanking our extraordinary tech team for making this service possible. It's a gorgeous winter morning here in the sanctuary. As you know, last summer we had the Tiffany stained glass windows covered in plywood after they were attacked by the Proud Boys following a peaceful Black Lives Matter march. The coverings remain throughout the fraught presidential election season and through the inauguration. This week, thanks to Bruce Dallaire, Tom Anderson, and John Anderson Miller, they finally came down. The windows have never looked so beautiful. If you're new to Arlington Street, please take a moment now to fill out a connection card. The link is in the chat. Since I can't greet you in person after the service, I'd love to follow up with a virtual hello. You are welcome here. Good morning. It's a joy to be here with all of you, the tech team and our staff musicians this morning. If you haven't already downloaded today's order of service, it's available in the chat and on the homepage at ASCBoston.org. All of the hymn lyrics are included in the order of service and will be posted in the chats so we may sing together. There's also a link to Sermon Bingo on the homepage. Feel free to play along with Rev Krim Preaches. As we continue our greetings, let's all say hello in the chat and engage that Arlington spirit of welcome that transcends physical distance as we greet one another heart to heart. Good morning, everyone. Our first hymn today is uh, a beautiful tune by uh, Carolyn McDade, Rising Green. Pardon me as I set a piece of paper 
right around my camera so you can still meet, see me, but I can see the lyrics. <laughs> All right, um, so I hope you'll sing along with this. Rushing on a far distant land Winging my song is the wind of my breast And my love blows over the land And my love, and my love, and my love foot carries days of the old into new. Our dreaming shows us the way. Wondrous our faith settles deep in the earth, rising green to bring a new day. It is now time for our treasured ritual of sharing community candles of sorrow and joy. These candles were submitted on our website by the Friday evening deadline. If you didn't submit your candle and have a joy or sorrow to share this morning, please wait until the third candle is lit, the silent candle, and then type your joy or sorrow in the chat. 
In addition to sharing our sorrows and joys this morning, let's reach out to one another in the week ahead, staying connected. May these times remind us of how very precious this beloved community is. We need one another. Despite having to be apart, may we stay very close. And now, in the spirit of invocation, let's join in singing Sanctuary. The words are printed in your order of service and in the chat. Some of us come today with heavy hearts. We open our hearts to you. A Candle of Sorrow from Bruce Johnston. My partner, Richard Fay, of 45 years, passed with COVID. He was a wonderful, caring person who helped the elderly with errands. He was a loving partner. We shared a beautiful life together. A Candle... Candles of Sorrow from Queen Cheryl. February 24, 2015. A candle of beloved memory for my friend Danae, whose life was cut short by those alluring blue bottles of Svetka vodka. They said they were his friend, but in the end betrayed him. What I wouldn't give to yell at you just one more time for blaring the disco music at 2 a.m. on a school night. I miss you, my sweet, silly friend. February 24th, 1964. After an incident this past week, my sister Kizzy is back in the psych ward where she will spend her 57th birthday. Drug and alcohol free for a record of seven weeks, Kizzy relapsed in January and is once again on self-destruct mode. My heart breaks for my kid sister who is in so much pain and there's nothing anyone can do for her. Happy birthday, Miss Kizzy, I love you. A candle of sorrow for Pam Thompson, a friend I've known since childhood who died from COVID this week. A Candle of Sorrow from Catherine Dooley. A Candle of Remembrance from Catherine Dooley. My dear friend and colleague Paula Shiraga was killed two years ago while riding her bicycle in Boston on February 15th, 2019. She was a peace and environmental activist, a wonderful children's librarian, a spiritually evolved soul. I miss her. Paula Shiraga Presente. A Candle of Sorrow from Claire Humphrey. Prayers of healing for my friend Judith, who has just been diagnosed with breast cancer. Early stage, but concerning. Please hold her in your hearts. A mixed candle from our A candle of relief that my brother and sisters in Austin, Fort Worth, and Dallas have all had their power restored. And also relieved that my aunts in El Paso never had any power outages in the first place. some of us come today in joy. We share your joy. A candle of joy from Queen Cheryl. Another February 24th date, but this one brings joy. Happy 70th birthday to my wonderful beloved friend Carol, who knows me better than anyone in the world, but still manages to love me anyhow. I am forever grateful and blessed beyond measure to have you in my life. A candle of joy from Joe Della Pena. In honor of Black History Month, I will be posting a video every day this month on Facebook of my many heroes and legends of black music, gospel, blues, jazz, classical, Broadway, and beyond. 
I hope you enjoy the music with me in love and gratitude. Hashtag black, black music matters, hashtag black lives matter. A candle of joy from Bonnie Spillane. For awakening my own self-worth and love, I am worthy of receiving. Let source and my guides help me become the woman I was meant to be. A candle of joy from Patty Lynn for my father and me. We have both been discharged from the hospital and are safely home recovering from COVID. A candle of gratitude for the support of others and for the love of the sanctuary. Thank you. A candle of joy for Texas and the deep south that, it, that the sun is returning and federal emergency aid is on its way. We will continue to hold you in our hearts through your long recovery. A candle of joy for our son James from Sarah and Josh Felino and Bookin. A candle of joy for our son James who turns 15 today. A birthday made even more special with the finalization of Josh's adoption papers. Tomorrow, with James tomorrow morning. What's been true in our hearts for many years is now official. Yay! joys we hold in our hearts, we light a silent candle to remember and to rejoice. May the peace of this sanctuary enter into our hearts as we share a quiet moment together, breathing our prayers for ourselves, for one another, for our country, and for the world. Please join me in saying our affirmation and covenant together. It's printed in the order of service in the chat. Love is the spirit of this congregation and service is our gift. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to speak our truths in love and to help one another. El amor es el espíritu de nuestra congregación y el servicio es nuestro regalo. Esto es a lo que nos comprometemos, convivir en paz, hablar nuestras verdades con amor y ayudarnos los unos a los otros. Good morning, friends. Hymn number 271 was written by Ralph Vaughan Williams with words by Bianco de Siena and Richard Littledale. This is hymn 271. Please join me for Come Down, O Love Divine. Oh, come. 
comforted draw near within my heart appear and kindle it the holy flame bestowing oh let it freely burn till earthly passions turn to dust and ashes in its heat consuming and let its glorious light shine ever on my sight and clothe me round the while my path illuming and so the glory strong for which this soul will long shall far out past the power of human telling for none can guess its grace till we become the I just discovered an ancient Zen Buddhist teaching I had never encountered, and I'm excited to explore it with you this morning. It says, do good, avoid evil, appreciate your lunacy, pray for help. I loved it right away because it's so plain. There's nothing apparently lofty about it. Especially, I appreciate its assumption that we know the difference between good and evil, do good, avoid evil, that we're all one sandwich short of a picnic, appreciate your lunacy, and that asking for help is a spiritual practice. It's simple, but let us not be deceived by what appears simple. Simple is not always easy. Four directives in one, do good, avoid evil, appreciate your lunacy, pray for help. Let's break this down. First, do good. Writer and Zen priest Norman Fisher writes, say hello to people, smile at them with your eyes, tell them happy birthday, I'm sorry for your loss. Is there something I can do to help? These things are normal social graces, he says, and we say them all the time, but to practice them intentionally is to work a bit harder at actually meaning them. The spiritual practice is to genuinely try to be thoughtful and helpful and kind in as many small and large ways as we can every day. What's the, t- the pandemic version of this? It starts with lying low. And when we venture out, wearing a mask, keeping our distance, remembering that this is hard for everyone. In these times, doing good demands ingenuity. I love this poem by Alison Luterman. It's called Small Talk. You'll hear a biblical reference to marrying the wrong sister. That's Jacob, tricked by his father-in-law Laban into marrying Leah, the older sister of Jacob's true love, Rachel. Here it is. At least once a day, I trudge up 38th, take a ride on Neville, and wind around the little green patch of park, past empty tennis courts and the deserted soccer field, where right now a masked man is playing with a remote control race car all by himself. I plod up Brookdale wearing my own mask, anonymous, 
featureless. I'm free to be anyone, a bank robber or a surgeon or a biblical bride tricking my unsuspecting groom into marrying the wrong sister. Although as I climb the hill and start to sweat, I confess I pull the thing down for some air. When I see someone walking toward me, we do our pandemic do -si do one of us dancing off the sidewalk to avoid the other. Beautiful day, says the stranger. Yes, yes, the roses, I reply. And we wave from afar. This talk I used to call small in the days I used to call ordinary. Do good. And second, avoid evil. Without getting too preachy, let's reaffirm that we know, each of us knows the difference between good and evil, and each of us is in the embrace of this wildly forgiving, saving faith. If we make a mistake, we say the nine magic words that could change the world. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Please forgive me. And we do everything we can to make it right. Norman Fisher writes, to avoid evil means to pay close attention to our actions of body, speech, and mind, noticing when we do, say, or think things that are harmful or unkind. When we embark on the spiritual path, we commit to paying attention when we fall short. Norman Fisher explains, having come this far, we can't help but notice our shoddy or mean-spirited moments. In the past, we might have said to ourselves, if she hadn't done that to me, I wouldn't have said that to her. It really was her fault. Now we are willing to accept responsibility for what we've done. So pay attention to what we do and think, not obsessively, not with a perfectionist flair, but just as a matter of course and with understanding and generosity. And finally, we free ourselves from most of our short-sighted and ungenerous thoughts and words. I didn't have to look far for an illustration of this point. Recently, I stopped into our small local grocery store where a sign asked customers to sanitize their hands before stepping farther inside. Two men were just ahead of me. The bottle of sanitizer was empty. One spoke sharply to the woman behind the register and I saw her recoil. The other man asked, is there a refill? I could grab it. Especially in these times, the emotions in every human interaction feel amplified. Crudeness, carelessness, and cruelty cut us. Kindness is like desert rain. I realized that I had a part to play in the scene that was unfolding. First, I said something affirming to the cashier. It was busy and she was holding down the front of the store by herself. And then I said something to the man who had been unkind, not exactly evil, but let's just say he wasn't winning. I could feel his restlessness. I said, everything's hard right now, isn't it? He looked at me as if I had spoken to him in a foreign language, which perhaps I had, but he nodded just slightly. And I prayed that acknowledging his struggle might help even a little, because after all, why would someone act like a jerk if they were feeling peaceful and happy? When his friend returned with the refill, the offending man took up the empty bottle, unscrewed the lid, and held it steady while his friend filled it up. Do good, avoid evil. And third, appreciate your lunacy. According to Norman Fisher in traditional Buddhism, this directive has to do with making offerings to two different kinds of creatures, demons who do what they can to derail us from our spiritual path and 
protectors who guide us in staying on it. Demons, protectors. Honestly, sometimes I think life would be simpler if I actually believed in these creatures or at least acted like I did. Maybe you do. I think of demons and protectors as forces within each of us. We all contain seeds of good and evil. Which are you watering? Actually, many spiritual traditions have a name for the forces that assail us on the spiritual path. Author and Vipassana tradition meditation teacher Jack Cornfield writes, the Christian Desert Fathers who practiced nearly 2000 years ago in Egypt and Syria called them demons. Father Evagrius left a Latin text of instructions for those who meditate. Stay watchful of gluttony and desire, he warned, and the demons of irritation and fear as well. The noonday demon of laziness and sleep will come after lunch each day, and the demon of pride will sneak up when you have vanquished the other demons. In Buddhism, the practice is to identify and name the demons, known collectively as the hindrances to clarity. The Buddha himself called his assailant Mara. He would say, I know you, Mara. As English poet William Blake wrote, those who enter the gates of heaven are not beings who have no passion or who have curbed their passions, but those who have cultivated an understanding of them. I've always loved the story of a retreat Jack Cornfield taught many years ago in California. His students on that retreat were therapists from the primal scream tradition, a practice of release and catharsis. Do you know about this? So apparently after a few days, they approached Jack to tell him that meditation was not working. We need a place to release, they said. Could we please use the meditation hall at a certain hour of the day to scream because otherwise it gets toxic when we hold it in. In all his wisdom, Jack suggested that they return to their meditation to simply be aware of what arose and see what might happen, adding that it probably wouldn't kill them. Since they'd come to learn something new, they willingly rose to the challenge. And after a few days, they returned to check in amazing they reported after sitting with their feelings they found that their feelings changed it turns out that if we're not hooked or if we can unhook it all passes through and passes over like a great storm appreciate your lunacy can mean bowing to our weaknesses our resistance, in other words, bowing to our humanness and really acknowledging the extensiveness and insidiousness of our confusion, selfishness, resentment, laziness, jealousy, all those unlovely weeds that pop up in the garden. Norman Fisher writes, we come by these things honestly. We've been well trained to manifest them at every turn. This is the prodigy of human life bursting forth at its seams. It is the effect of our upbringing and our society, which we are trying to tame and bring gently around to the good. So we make offerings to the demons, the demons inside us. And we develop a humorous appreciation for our own very humanness. We are in good company. Do good, avoid evil, appreciate your lunacy, and fourth, pray for help. I know the word prayer is loaded for some of us. I myself took a long time to make peace with it and to find a way to pray that really feels life-giving. Prayer is a powerful practice, whether we imagine a God or a deity or not. We can reach out beyond ourselves, 
The worn out joke about Unitarian Universalists is that we begin our prayers to whom it may concern. We can pray to whatever forces we believe or don't believe in. Norman Fisher insists that prayer is not asking to be absolved, not a matter of abrogating our own responsibility. When we pray, we're asking for help and for strength to act with the understanding that whatever goodness comes our way from a wider sphere than we can control, prayer reminds us that both self-reliance and personal accomplishment are illusions if we are wise we have learned that there is no way to do anything alone and we accomplish nothing by ourselves. If we feel lost, we can pray to be found even though we are never really lost. We can pray to see clearly, to be useful and to keep our broken hearts open. I changed my mind about prayer one very dark night on a back road on Cape Cod more than 30 years ago. A parishioner, a Brewster parishioner I love named Lee had called me. Normally unflappable, she was a nurse who had been running medical supplies in support of the revolutionary government in Nicaragua. She was clearly shaken. Lee had adopted a slew of kids and after her husband ran off with his secretary, raised them on her own. One of her sons, Tim, had struggled mightily with addiction and it landed him in jail. No amount of reaching out to him, offers of help or love without condition could reach him. He was always on her mind, a sharp pain in her huge heart. Lee was calling me because she had just answered her front door and Tim was standing outside. She had no idea what to do. Could I please come? I was 27 years old and I was still learning that in situations like this one, it doesn't matter if you think you know what to do or if you really have no idea or if there's really anything anyone can do. What matters is that we show up. We show up for each other. So I was heading for Lee's house, driving that dark road with no idea what I was going to do or say. No magic tricks, nothing up my sleeve. And it occurred to me to ask for help in that to whom it may concern kind of way. Because there was nothing else I could think to do. I drove and I prayed, hedging my bets just in case I might get a hand from beyond. It's possible that my entire prayer was if I could just bring a little light into all this darkness, everyone would appreciate it. Thank you. And clear as a bell, a response flowered in my heart, a single phrase I had loved and carried with me from my teenage years, words from Willa Cather's Death Comes for the Archbishop. Where there is great love, there are always miracles. As it turns out, I think that's how prayer is supposed to work. And it did work that night. Me seated in Lee's living room between her and Tim, me reminding them that love is the greatest power in the world, stronger than illness, stronger than broken trust and broken hearts, stronger even than death. They took it, took love and ran with it and never looked back. And Tim did recover and made amends many times over. Years later, he held his mother's hand as she lay dying, and we remembered that night and the choices they'd made and wept all over again at the miracle of love. Beloved spiritual companions, do good. 
avoid evil. Appreciate your lunacy. Pray for help. Where there is great love, there are always miracles. Remember, your love is a miracle. Amen. And we will care for each other As the world around us unravels And we will tend to the spark Of hope that lives within our grieving hearts Do you sing that with me? And we will care And we will care for each other as the world around us unravels And we will tend to the spark Of hope that lives within our grieving hearts And we are here now in this present moment Lifting our voices and hearts and we are here now, we have come together, we are tending the spark. Let's try that together. And we are here now, in this present moment, lifting our voices and hearts. And we are here now, we have come together, we are tending the spark of hope oh may it grow let's try that together of hope of Voices and hearts, 
And we are here now, we have come together, we are tending the spark of Friends, our generosity continues to astound everyone. We are continuing to pay all our staff and maintain our building even when most of us can't be here. Thanks to Queen Cheryl and our Capital Campaign Kitchen Cabinet members, Al Ingram, Sarah Kulibeck, and Philip Roberts for all the work they to pull off yesterday's surprise thank you gift distribution yesterday. The drive-by walk-up handoff was a blast. Those of you who made the gift to the All Souls campaign were not, who were not able to come by yesterday will be receiving John Anderson Miller's beautiful gift in the mail. Thank you, John. Thanks also to John and Philip for meeting our volunteer development professionals here yesterday afternoon to begin the filming of a video for the capital campaign to show the community of donors beyond our congregation. And finally, thanks to our transformation team for Radical Justice who have pulled together a big group of Arlington Street people to engage in Beloved Conversations, a program for Unitarian Universalists seeking to embody racial justice as a spiritual practice that will begin this spring. It's amazing how, even in the midst of a global pandemic, we have managed to continue to carry forward the good work of the congregation and to find ways to be together even while we're apart. Please take a moment now to join me in giving to sustain this beloved community by filling our virtual collection plate. You can text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 617-300-0509, scan the QR code in the order of service, visit our homepage at ASCBoston.org and click on the yellow Donate Now button, or write a check and send it to Arlington Street Church. Thank you for your generosity. After you made your gift to sustain our beloved community, please continue to share in the chat what inspires you in these difficult days. Hello, friends. This piece is from Man of La Mancha by Joe Darian and Mitch Lay. Um, most of you are probably already familiar with, with um, Don Quixote. Um, and this, this is sung by Don Quixote, and he is absolutely all about doing great things in the world, at least in his own mind. And also on theme, he's totally in touch with his own lunacy. This is The Impossible Dream. To dream the impossible dream from afar to try when your arms are too weary to reach the 
unreachable star. This is my quest to follow that star. No matter how hopeless, no matter how far, to fight for the right without question or pause, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. And I know if I'll only be true to this glorious quest, that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest. And the world will be better for this, that one man, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable stars. There's always a lot going on in the Zoom room. This week, in addition to our weekly gatherings for loving kindness meditation, poetry, a tea party, yoga, and writing, there is also the Buddha's Belly Group and Arlington Street Meditation Center are gathering on Tuesday evening. And the Wednesday Literary Salon is gathering with Professor Helms to read Dante's Inferno on Wednesday afternoon. Please visit ASCBoston.org for information on everything else going on this week. All are always welcome. This is our final Sunday of sharing the collection plate with the Unitarian Universalist Urban Ministries Renewal House. For over 40 years, Renewal House has provided temporary emergency shelter and advocacy services to individuals and families escaping domestic violence. Renewal House was one of the first domestic violence shelters in the state to provide shelter for male as well as female survivors, and it is sought out by other agencies for its expertise in attending to the spiritual needs of survivors. Renewal House works closely with other programs that serve the LGBTQI communities, as well as those that serve elder and dis individuals with disabilities to support these underserved populations. Among its many programs, Renewal House offers a 24-hour hotline, bilingual Spanish and English advocacy, support groups and pastoral care counseling, English as a second language, classes, and job training and community outreach education. To make your gift to share the plate, please text the amount you wish to give and the word SHARE to 617-300-0509. Detailed instructions are in the chat. Thank you for your generosity. At the close of today's service, please unmute yourself for virtual coffee hour and enjoy the opportunity to visit in smaller groups in breakout rooms. If you're new to Arlington Street, breakout room number one is just for you. Emma and Jason Upal and baby Vivienne are hosting today. If you are a new friend of Arlington Street, please chat Kemma anytime and tell her you'd like to go to breakout room one after the service today. Before I turn it over to Mark, David, and Julie for the closing hymn, thank you to all the who, to all who, all of you who joined in today's service, and to all who made it possible. Remember, we're all in this together. Well, everyone, our final hymn is "Amazing Grace," number two hundred five in our hymnal. Hope you'll sing it along with us. Wow. See? Nice job.
Before our benediction, I invite you to reach out your hands and touch the sides of your square. Touch hands with the people to your left and your right and send out love to the person on either side of you and on either side of them. Send out love into this beloved spiritual community and feel it coming back to you. Love is the spirit of this congregation. And now for a benediction, I invite you to put your hands over your heart in namaste. I bow to the divine in you. Our benediction is from American poet Mary Oliver. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down in the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed. How to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Let us keep this faith, beloveds, and pass it on. The service begins when the service ends. Bless your hearts. I love you. Amen.
Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. For your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. For your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace.